yo, welcome to the Lion Podcast. Like it or not, the live is show in the O. We're ready to go. Let's introduce to my right, it's Big Stack. What's up? And over to my left, it's Madison. Hello. And I'm your host, Corey Tokes. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the show, everybody. What is up, Lion family? How's everybody doing? Good. <laughs> we're in the new studio today. Uh, we're video now. Good to see everybody. Good to see hello. everybody. Hello, hello. So excited to be back to work. I was anxious. Uh, we had to go through with the move. We moved the studio. It's everything new. It took a long time. I'm sorry for the delay. But we're back. We have a new direction. We'll get into that in a little bit. And we have new faces with us. So... How are you guys? Daniel, what's up, man? Good, man. Doing well. Yeah. Daniel's a, a brilliant guy, although he won't give himself too much credit. Uh, but Madison also is highly intelligent, and I'm so happy to have both of you guys here. Thank you for coming in and doing the thing. It's the new team. It's a new team, baby. Oh, yeah. It's Very beautiful. complimentary. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, I mean it, man. It's honest. But, um, but yeah, so we got a couple new shows now. Uh, I'm going to have my BS and with talk show. That's kind of like the lion freestyle. It's uh, going to be every once a week, maybe whenever we get it in there, but it's just a random show. going to have random guests on there and stuff like that. And then we got verbal medicine. That's going to be a short show because uh, analytics say people don't really listen for that long. Uh, 10 minutes, like 15 minutes. They say to keep your short shows in there because it's good. So that's more or less for, Topics that you don't really spend 20 minutes on, you know, just for short vibes and stuff like that. So that's what that's for. And, uh, of course, this one, Lime Podcast, going to continue on and um, going to rock it out. So without further ado, let's get into this. Inspired or not, I have no country to fight for. My country is Earth, and I am a citizen of the world. Eugene V. Debs. Ah, I love him. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. That is so good. That it's it's so fitting because it's so true. Like, we're, like who who's to say what divides us and stuff like that? If you're a citizen of the world, it's how you should look at it. You know, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. There, no. There's a lot of quotes from that guy that are pretty spot on. You were, yeah. I saw you getting into Eugene a little bit. Man's a legend, dude. Um, if you get a chance, check out Eugene Victor Debs. He's uh, very inspiring and he's way ahead of his time. He's he's unbelievable. All right, guys, it's orientation day today. Like I said, we got some new faces. It's uh, it's good to have everybody back, and we're doing it. We're gonna have people rotating in and out of here. It's the usual deal. But uh, these are the main faces. Little O was supposed to be here. But he had something pop up because he's always busy. But you know how it is. He's got kids and everything. So um, like I said before, we got a new focus. We want to organize the mass of working people. We want to get uh, a thing going, a movement, peacefully but desperately. It's uh, our own grassroots uh, bottom-up movement, right? So if you could, click like, click subscribe because... The, the more you click like and subscribe, the more fast, uh, the faster people see this. So, and this is why our economic system has major flaws wherever it exists. All right. It's responsible for destroying the environment, ecosystems, rainforests, polluting our breathing air, neglecting our infrastructure, taking uh, advantage of working class uh, Americans and everybody else that's under the oppression of this system. And, um, you know, we're going to get into all kinds of that as the show goes on. But um, for today, what we want to focus on is the how capitalism affects the uh, global warming or the climate change or however you want to put it. And we want to strengthen that connection because I don't I hear a lot of um, talk about it, but I don't really hear it put into those terms. People want to talk about policies and doing stuff like that. But it, unless you really understand the system, which we're going to explain here in a little bit, then you really th don't know that that's not going to work. The policy, you could do whatever policy you want and all that stuff. It, I mean, it would work if the system worked, but it, you'll understand that in a little bit. So we want to strengthen that connection. And I want to tell you right now, first and foremost, if you do continue to listen to this, the earth will thank you. 
because it is very critical what we're discussing today. And, um, yeah, it's just really important. So, so we'll get into this. The key institutions of the capitalist economy is the enterprise. That's where uh, store, the factory, clothes, uh, you know, all the goods are produced at the enterprise. That's where the capitalist enterprise takes place. And, um, you know, entertainment, shelter, all that stuff is basically the enterprise. Now, there's groups of people that own the enterprise, and these are the shareholders. They could be many people. It doesn't matter if you have one share in a company or multiple shares in a company. It's basically the owners buy shares, right? Everybody knows how to buy a share, correct? I know I know you're an investor, Mr. Daniel, Big Stack. I've messed around on, uh, what is it, Robin Hood a little bit lately. Yeah. How's that going for Fidelity you? Fidelity is the way to go. Oh, yeah. What is it? Fidelity. Well, not actually. I honestly think every single one of those is just a scam, to be honest, if you look at what Robin Hood did to everybody during the whole oh, game. Man, so it. brutal. But, like, no, I invest as well, but not actually invest. Going hard. You know? You're not hardcore. Not at all. I had my sister's boyfriend tell me a couple of companies to invest in. <laughs> that's that's how you yeah. do it, though. You get with I, the people. I got, that like, a share and, like, a quarter of a share of, like, I got, like, a quarter share of Apple. Right. Like a quarter. Right. Well, that's cool, though. <laughs> so it's like that's that. nothing. But well, they're well, expensive, like, though. How much is enough it? To how with. much is a share of Apple? One share. It's, it's expensive. Like 300 though. bucks. Right. Exactly. 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 So owners buy shares. Everybody knows how to buy a share. You go to most of it's done electronically. Right. But you go to a stockbroker and you make the deal. You give them money and they give you a share. It's very simple. That's how it's done. Uh, that's how you become an owner. You buy shares. Right. So how many uh, shares does a company have? It could have as many as it can sell you. It's, that's the goal. That's how you increase the value of the share. You want to buy more shares. They want to sell you more shares. That's important to know. For example, say I want to start a company, and we're doing it out of my garage, and we happen to be successful. It's me, my neighbor, Madison, Daniel. We're, we're doing some things, and we we're, we're happen to be doing well, right? All right. Well, there's a problem. I need more money, all right? It comes to this point where I need more money, and uh, I need equipment. I might need a piece of machinery or something like that to produce my product more efficiently. So what do I do? I got to get people with money to buy my stock. And how do I do that? Well, I get a piece of paper, or I write out a little brochure, and I get creative. I say... Uh, I write a little, you know, I'm, I'm, we're going to make a fortune, right? We're going to make a fortune. It, people g get sold by this all the time. We're going to make a fortune. We're going to, we're going to, you know, with this machine to create a secret sauce. And I got to go to, you know, Africa to get this peanut to make my secret sauce. And, and just, you know, you basically bullshit the people. We all get hustled by this every day. And, uh, and this is how you do it. And you write this and basically you come up with a stock that you write up and you get this stock for cheap. You could get it for a half a penny, a quarter penny or whatever. And then you sell that stock for $20 to people. And this is how you make money. You, you basically, you notice the markup there. That's better than pizza, right? You got, you got the half a penny and then you get 20 bucks. I mean, that's pretty good. You get, you, that it's would make Amazon you look. prices right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah that, that would make you love capitalism, actually. So this enables me to get my money, right, for my equipment or our equipment so we can keep producing our stuff. The investor gets his piece of the company in hopes that my product is successful and does very well. And if it does well, the investor can go sell that and make what's called a capital gain, right? So... This is how corporations make money. This is how the game is played. So, okay, who are the board of directors? These people are elected annually by the shareholders. Their sole responsibility is to make profits, okay? So they grow the company. That's their job. And the board of the directors run the company. There could be 10, 12, 15 of these people. Uh, they're in control of what to produce, how to produce it, what to do with the profits, this is what they do. They're the board of directors. They run the company. 
All right. What power do the shareholders have? They're the owners, but what power do they have? They don't have any power except for one thing. Every year, the board of directors are voted for, and they'll mail uh, everybody that's a shareholder. They'll mail you something in the mail. They'll say, hey, at the Sheraton Hotel in Philadelphia or whatever, we're having a big meeting, and uh, we're going to elect the board of directors. Now, if you have one share, each share, by the way, is one share, one vote, right? So if you have, if you're a major company and you have tons of shares, some companies have 5 million shares, 10 million shares. Some big companies have 800 million shares and stuff like that. If it's Starbucks or GM or somebody huge like that. So obviously the people with like, even if you have 10,000 shares of a big company, you're not going to fly all the way out to Philadelphia and because it's going to cost you the money to get there. When you get there, it's going to cost you the money to stay there. And then, you know, it's a waste of time because if somebody has 5 million shares, your, your 10,000, 20,000 shares don't really mean a thing. It has as much impact as somebody with zero shares, right? So they know people ain't going out there. 1% of Americans, 1% uh, of American shareholders own over two thirds of all the shares. So the, it's concentrated in a very small percentage of people who own the bulk of the shares. All right. Now, because people don't have the extra money or know the knowledge to fucking be able to invest in the stock market. Right. Like, but it's the money. But it's also like when coming down to the stock mar market, it's like you really have to find the right companies to invest in. Because I don't want to invest in it like what you're about to get into. I don't want to invest in a company that's going to fucking destroy my planet. Yes. I don't want to invest in a company that's that even though it has a great like front on and has a great face, but right. when you actually dig into that shit, they're investing in the fucking KKK. You know what I right. mean? Right. It's some like, it's some wicked shit. It, right. And exactly. And it's it's like it's so difficult, and Americans don't have the fucking time. I feel like because we're working fucking sixty hours a week to be able to fucking live paycheck by paycheck to then go and research like basically w a whole other language, Correct. and so it's like it's it's difficult. So and I think that the top one percent, or not even just top one percent, but the people, the corporations, make it deem it unaccessible for us to be able to do that, right? And make it think that oh, this is this is something that you guys don't do. This is something that the upper elite do you know right, what i mean right for sure you're making a lot of sense um and that's what i'm gonna go with this like what does all this have to do with climate change okay take into account everything i just said about the board of directors uh their job is to make money for the shareholders no matter what is what she was alluding to or the shareholders won't vote for you the following year so it's that simple it's you know you could be the nicest person in the world. You could be a tree hugger. It doesn't matter because your job is to make more money. It's to grow the company. So if you don't do it, the next person that replaces you will. And it's, and it's that simple. You're out of a job. So it doesn't even matter if you have a social conscience or whatever. You're out. So say there's a new piece of technology that comes in. It's a machine. It does wonderful things it produces your product at a fast rate we're making a lot of money right but this machine also has a byproduct that it spews toxic fumes and uh it's you know it's not too good for the workers it hurts somebody it could get out it could be worse who knows it could cause illnesses it could cause asthma all that shit so guess what it doesn't matter because if it produces the product more the workers don't have a fucking say in it they just bring it in there, they put it out, and they go for it. If you don't like it, you could go, we'll replace you with another worker bee, and that's it. But we're going to make our product, we have to make our money, or I'm out of a job next year because the shareholders will vote in it. And, or another company will come use this piece of technology, and they'll get it right in there, and they'll go Yeah, they work. don't give a shit about us. Right, correct. <laughs> so, you know, they, they don't really give a shit if your factory is spewing fumes because they live in different areas anyway they'll be up on a hill somewhere and they'll fan that shit somewhere else it, they they're not around for that so that's how that goes down another example is how we outsource all these jobs right um if you know anything about our economic system we basically 
Um, we have been exploiting cheap labor in other countries since the really the beginning of the internet and the beginning of uh, jet engines around the 70s by millions of jobs, which people don't talk about because that's just not, you know, that wouldn't be good for us to know that kind of stuff. So they'll tell you about immigrants and all the other shit, but they won't tell you how we're just outsourcing millions and millions of jobs to these other places. Well, basically what I'm saying is these ships have to go get our product to these factories and come back. So when they go over there, ship, instead of just going a few miles down the road now, now we're going thousands, tens of thousands of miles away and coming back at rates. That's why everything you wear is made by China. Everything I use, I cut my nails the other day with some clippers, China, every, everything's China or, or Brazil or India or anywhere they could exploit cheap labor rather than paying dollars per hour here, which is another reason why our wages didn't go up, but we'll explain that in the next show. But beyond that, it causes a uh, Ships leak. They leak these uh, all kinds of shit into the water. They uh, spew out all this, c- this shitty CO2 into the atmosphere. It's a really, not, really ugly deal. Not just that. Like, but like if you're getting into the ships part of it and, like, the whole outsourcing shit from China, like, it, this isn't just, like, an um, like an American issue. This is a global issue. Every single country does this. It's not just America. And I think it's like when we're talking, we have to like we have to get the whole world onto this. And yeah, I think America's a start. But like you also to put it in this way, there are millions of ships out at sea every single fucking second of the day. Not just shipping shit. They're fishing, and that's what's gonna. Oh yeah, that's our we're gonna get into that too, right? Like that, that shit is destroying our environment. Yeah, commercial, commercial, commercial fishing. fishing because yep. then they'll drop their shit into the ocean. They'll drop their fishing nets. They'll drop their fucking garbage. They'll drop bycatch that will then toxic like fucking put toxins into the fucking water. And it's right. like, I don't know. It's just, it's. The f- ships that are transporting goods to and from different places, but it's also the millions of other ships that are doing direct harm to our oceans and, like, direct, even worse harm than the other ones that are going out. Right. Like, there are so many factors that are that we are doing that affect climate change. Oh, yeah. There are completely. so much. There's so much. And, and every single one ties in to these corporations and our government and how and our decisions within it. Because, like, yes, capitalism ties directly hand-in-hand with with climate change, but, like, if this is a whole world issue, other countries aren't, don't have a capitalism structure. You know what I mean? Right. But they're still participating in it. Right. So I think, Well, they say that, they say the highest emitters uh, are the ones that are covering it up the most, too. Mm Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's totally true. Uh, but um, I so, heard so loose lips sink ships. <laughs> <laughs> but the but here's what uh, alluding to what you were talking about uh, the pH levels in the water, right? Um, it's been eight point two for thousands of years uh, up until the industrial revolution, right? Uh, now it is dropped to eight point one, and that doesn't sound like a a lot, a big drop, eight point two to eight point one. But when you consider that it's been stabilized at eight point two for thousands of years, that's a big drop. And only over the last two hundred fifty three hundred years, it has dropped to eight point one. And they say that it's expected to drop to seven point eight by the end of the century. Now, what that means is the is the alkaline um, alkaline. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> the alkaline, I couldn't hear. Uh, the al- yeah, the alkaline versus the acidic. It's uh, the acidification of the ocean, right? So uh, you get carbonic acid as the CO two gets absorbed by the ocean. So what happens is, for every pound we emit uh, of CO two, thirty percent of it of that pound gets absorbed into the ocean. And now why that's bad is they have phytoplankton. And well, besides, it's bad for the uh, environment and the sea life and the ecosystem. But they have phytoplankton, which is marine algae, and that this is responsible for half the planet's total oxygen. 
Yeah, okay. algae literally fucking supplies us with almost all of our fucking oxygen. Half. For every, they say for every second breath you take, one of them is responsible for, comes from the ocean. So, and this could, and, and the warm waters take the phytoplankton and it makes it, they says that uh, phytoplankton goes where the water's cooler, right? So if the water gets too warm, then they're going to they're gonna go somewhere else. But what's the problem with that is the fish have to go with it. Because yeah. they, they live off it. And this sharks, whales, dolphins, everything. So you won't, not only will they go, you know, we, I think it's 40%. We've killed, since 1950, we've killed off 40% of all the phytoplankton. And well, the, you also got to think, like, that's what all the fish. So that's what that 8.2 to 8.1 drop O2. did. Right. Like, fish need that, that O2 just as much as we do. Facts. And they're the first ones that get the hit of it because they that's their environment. And Correct. when all of this algae is disappearing, their fucking oxygen is disappearing. That's literally what they need. It gets processed through their fucking gills. Like, and that's yeah. the fish that we and need we eat. to consume. And we eat, But too. it's also not just that. It's also all of the plastic Plastics. that is in our ocean Correct. then gets diluted. and Because plastic doesn't break down. It just turns into these microplastics that fish then are, like, it gets processed through their gills and it, they get consumed fish consume it right but they don't die from it they just keep processing that and in, in throughout their system and well then we, some they do some die do, yes Whale, whales have been but what's even worse is that we then eat it i mean yeah, i'm talking about the di- i'm talking about like the micro micro plastics yep. that took thousands and thousands and like not thousands of years but like fucking yeah years and to they fucking still don't have down. studies of what that's doing to us too but yeah right because it's so soon because plastic fucking we, we with our consumption of plastic has only like fucking sped up since when the fucking there, there is some statistic of how much plastic we consume through our food right every year i don't know what it is but there is some some kind of statistic from from fish and whatever that that, w- that ends up getting into our body. And America right. is the number one issue of not being honest with the American with their people. Sorry about um, what's in their fucking products and in their food. Oh yeah, we have no fucking clue what's in any of our food right. at all. The fruits, vegetables, fucking uh, the packages, the literally fucking anything. We have no clue what's in it because it's so processed. Just just so. If anybody's curious, yeah, you should, you you should check out what's in um, artificial vanilla. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were telling me that <laughs> oh, one day. Oh, it's like fucking cockroaches and shit. Oh, right? no, no, it's even worse. I, actually, I think cockroaches would be an upgrade from what this is. <laughs> well, one of the, one of the sources oh, is wait. from the glands of oh, a, the, beaver's, yeah. uh, be- a beaver's anal glands. <laughs> yeah, that's how, the, so, that's how vanilla I, is. Can you believe this? Yeah. N- yeah. <laughs> and that's true, dude. Like, we looked it up. And that was, he told me about that one day. Yo, uh, I, I was like, mind blown. No more Nobody, vanilla ice cream, none of that stuff. It That's could right. literally be <laughs> fucking a tiny a bit of vomit, and I would still put that shit in my cupcakes because it still tastes amazing. Right. Like, I'm sorry. If I can't taste that shit, don't tell me. But at the same time, but it still hurts. If it if it's it like, still hurt you. but that's the thing though, is it's not like if it's chemicals and like pesticides and shit. That's a beaver's anal glands. At least I know that shit came from a fucking well, beaver. The only reason why I even it's found out about it up. was because I read <laughs> At this. At least not a lab. I read this article <laughs> that the scientists devised some way to melt plastic bottles and create vanilla, uh, vanilla ex- extract out of melted plastic bottles. Yeah. So yeah. then I was like, well, if they can make it out of that, what do they make it out of now? And then they came up with, it's made out of coal tar, the, the whole beaver thing, and some other stuff. I mean, weird listen, stuff. I'm saying all this shit, and I'm hitting a vape right now, and I don't eat, like, and it's flavored kiwi lemonade, frozen kiwi lemonade, right? Yeah. This shit tastes like burnt plastic. <laughs> and it's like, and you know where it came from? Beaver semen. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That almost Hell made yeah. me quit my nicotine addiction. <laughs> and that almost made me quit my nicotine addiction. But where did it come from? I don't fucking know. Oh, I thought you knew. No, <laughs> I was probably like, guess. but what I was going to say, right, dude. oh no, but this is going to lead me into this, which was um, all of these fucking vapes. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a canceled brand, right? And, right. Or Cali Plus had a brand that got canceled, but because we still had all that shipment from China, because those that brand was from China or, or something or whatever, um, their lab was the vape store that I go to, even though it was like months and months expired, still sold it. 
And so, and that's fucking nicotine juice in a vape. Like, right. that shit can literally fucking destroy your body. Yeah. But, like, legally, you can still fucking sell that shit. Yeah. So Vapes are particularly bad for younger people because their le- lungs are still in a stage of development. So, they could get... Could you technically... Are they allowed to sell it even if it's expired? I mean... And usually, you can't sell expired anything, right? I honestly don't know. Shit, I bought some muscle milk the other day that was, like, fucking... Nine days old, dude. It tasted like... Well, if you go to gas stations, actually, gas stations have a big problem with keeping expired food in their shelves. And yeah, check expiration dates. Well, That's I mean, I'm sure they especially do, muscle. but are they allowed to do that? I don't, I don't think they're allowed to. I don't know if they're allowed, but the point is, given this economic system, it's not possible to have a social conscience. Uh, that's the point of all this. It's not like, uh, like I said earlier, it's not like these guys could want to change it's it's the way the system runs you either do it or another pe- person will step in and they'll do it for you and you'll be out of a job it's that simple so but sorry i also want to point out yeah going into the vapes and going into the shipping and everything it's all in this it's all about the system sorry it's all about the system like jewel just si- just uh settled a lawsuit for purposely advertising for kids the only reasons i got hooked on this was because all my fucking friends were saying, do it, it's okay, it's all right, because the company themselves were pushing this agenda and pushing this propaganda that if this is better than cigarettes. Same thing with with um, just, like, any of the fishing. They're saying that, no, this is a sustainable fishing thing. Like, it's okay to eat this salmon because it came from a fishing farm, or it's okay to eat this because we're not actually destroying the environment. Right, but when they it's are. not. Right. It's all just these, and fishing these, farms are these not companies good. just pushing their agendas and pushing their propaganda towards us, and we listen to it, and we feed into it, and we trust yeah. them. Yeah, and then yeah. they say we're fucking responsible for misinformation. Exactly. And that's <laughs> why it's so hard to start this fight and to start this battle because you, you're the dealing with so many people that are that – are uneducated, not uneducated. But really, I want to say. Sh- but really, but it should be. It are should be being mis. But but really, it should be like simple to explain it to them. It's like, hey, we have no dog in the fight. They're doing that because of money. But They're when telling you, you one thing because for, they have stuff a profit like to make. Cigarettes and whatever that's been going on for forever. They used to have advertisements that said nine out of ten dentists recommend camels. Right. Like that's yeah. And Flintstones used to smoke. Marlboros and whatever. Listen, we knew that ingesting anything, fucking, and smoking any, inhaling anything is bad for you. But at the same time, I was fucking 15 and I was like, I'll be able to quit it. It's fine. It's just right. a fucking vape. You know what I mean? And now I'm fucking 19 get, and dark. I'm like, dude, I wish I could quit this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you can. That's also, it. vaping is a whole different thing because you're actually dealing with like, addiction at a certain point but like it's still just about companies pushing their agendas and pushing their propagandas on people to manipulate you well back to the emissions um since 1988 since 1988 excuse me 100 companies have caused 71 percent of greenhouse gas emissions yeah i believe that that is fucking crazy right there now i'm gonna shift gears right now and really get down to earth with what's up ahead because um, that was very polite, what we were just talking about. It's about to get dark, but again, you have to listen to this, because if we're going to do something about it, we have to do it together. One person can do whatever the fuck they want, but unless we're together... In other words, we're fighting like a uphill battle with our hands tied behind our back. Well, right? you're fighting... But if, but if you're just one person walking up the hill with your hands tied behind your back, that's one thing. But if you have a whole mountain of people going up that hill it's harder to keep those people contained, right? Like, that's kind of the idea. But what were you going to say? Sorry. I was going to say, you're fighting people that think that they're believing what they're doing is right. And when you're... I believe that that's true. And Americans especially are known for being very stubborn Stubborn, and very ignorant. And when you try to challenge somebody's beliefs or just even their way of thinking about something... We get very stubborn and very defensive, and we ha- we have America. we have a problem That's with true. not listening. Just not listen. If people just listen, just ad- and not just listen, you know I think? but just uh, just understood, like while listening, like really took in their words, processed it through their brain, and looked at it from the other person's perspective, then looked at it from their own, and was like, 
okay, I'm going to come to my own conclusion, but there's no free thinking anymore. Like, not sorry, individual thinking, not free thinking. There's just no more, like, like being able to think for yourself anymore and being able to come to your own conclusions and opinions for certain people, well, for half of America. Right. And But I think that's the purpose between um, arming the media with the misinformation because if you're angry about something, then it blinds your human vision. Exactly. And how can we blame them for being, I don't, I hate brainwashed, but it's like being like. You can't, that's right. You're right. Being manipulated. I can't be, I can't be mad at somebody for being manipulated or having another way of beliefs that is just wrong because that was what they were taught. Right. And it's everywhere. It's everywhere you look now. But at the same time. That's why usually when I'm telling somebody about something, I'm like, did you hear about this right like like this is what i heard i just not not, right hey this is how it is man did you know that right i just can't stand it when the skeptics are when it becomes the like the people that are overly like aggressive towards their defense you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like when you're not even trying to listen or even try to just even say anything that's when it's like it's hard for people to get another person to listen you know right it's hard and that's why i think especially after the past what fucking five years in america people are tired of trying to get other people to fucking listen right but i think it's a different day today because especially that's why we started this episode with the environment because if we don't get our shit together it's one thing to sit there and go back and forth about things you know policies and stuff like that but this is a essentially a dead end road. I mean, that's what we're staring at. Yeah, right now. We are. This is an ultimate dead end road. And people don't, you know, it takes a lot of data, a lot of scientific data to get to a point where, you know, it goes into a textbook, but it's, you're looking at it right now to where we have plenty of things, which is what we're about to get into, um, th- that they're staring you down right now and saying, Hey, this is not good. Everything you're looking at right now it's not good, and we have to get our shit together because if we don't, hey, that's it. That's your kids, your kids' kids, and uh, it's it's honestly it's scary, but it's a necessary scary, and that's the that's the thing. And this, if there's anything we could be bipartisan on, it's it's the fucking you know it's this. We we could all come together on this and say, hey, this is not acceptable for you know the future but you you're right the misinformation is a motherfucker and also people like living in la la land and i feel like we haven't experienced enough consequences yet of the climate of like the climate crisis going on i don't think we like people in in fucking kansas have experienced the fucking climate crisis enough to be like okay this is an issue but like But the scary part is if we wait till that time, exactly. it's too late. And it's already yeah, too late. And that's what I was going to say was that it, it's going to be too late by then. Yeah. And and the saddest thing about it is the poor have contributed the least emissions and they are going to suffer the most. The yeah. rich contribute the most, like we just said, to global emissions and they won't suffer at all. Mm-hmm. In fact, they have profited from this tremendously. And that's the most fucked up thing about it. And that's why I think that there's hope because all those poor people outnumber the rich people. And all we have to do is come together under this, you know, and, and say, Hey, enough's enough. You you know, how much money do you really need? And when, when's the time to really go to green energy and have negative emission uh, technology to start to undo what's been done? Because this zero carbon shit is not, it's it's just a it's just for show. Dude, there, there's a lot of misinformation. When that there. Robin Hood shit went down, I have never seen billionaires so scared. And it's because we went for their money. We went for their money. We didn't go for nothing. We didn't go for their companies. Like like because what I feel like when it comes to like social issues, we like Black Lives Matter and sh- like especially what happened with the whole like last summer. I have never seen so many companies change their home pages to Black Lives Matter so fucking quick, and it's like, and that's all they did, you know. But like when you come for their money, that's when they're like, oh shit, we need to fucking like we need to do something. Right. Like we need like there's something going on. Right. But like and it's just a front. Like I was saying, like yeah. these companies just try to put on this front and say, 
okay, we put the Black Lives Matter logo on. We're good now. Yeah. But it's like, that's no. That's exactly true. That it, is it, true. Like, it's, that's, no, that's not, that's not how it is. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they were, they were scared. Nike did it. Be- because you know what? They were scared that if they didn't do that, they were going to lose money. Right. But and, uh, they, you know, yeah, but we got to, we got to get on. We got to get through this. But you're, you're absolutely right. You're a hundred percent right. Um, I just want to break down some stats real quick. The poorest half of the world's population, right? 3.5 billion people are responsible for just 10% of the carbon emissions. Those are the poorest people right there, all right? The three, three and a half billion. At the time of this study, it was half the world almost. Um, the richest 10% are responsible for more than half of all emissions. That's over 50% of all emissions. Uh, and an individual in the top 1% uses 175 times the carbon as an individual from the bottom 10%. Like Because they got more money to spend to destroy them. They got factories and, yeah, they, they got, got 10 air conditioners Dude, on their house. Dude, look at fucking right, Bella Hadid. That, I mean, that girl. 10 air conditions on their house. <laughs> I, listen, I love that girl. She's fucking beautiful and Who everything. Is it? Who Bella is it? Hadid, she's a model. But and she talks all about like climate change and social issues and everything. But she's a fucking supermodel who travels on a fucking private jet, fucking three, four, five times a week. You know what I mean? Right. Like, uh, it's just so necessary evil. Yeah, it's like (laughs) the goal as of a year ago was to limit our global temperature rise to one point five degrees Celsius rather than two degrees because at half a degree, scientists say would have enormous ramifications um for example a rise of 1.5 degrees is estimated to reducing the number of people vulnerable to climate related risk by up to 457 million 10 million fewer people exposed to the risk of sea level rise uh limiting further damage to ecosystems reductions in food and livestock cutting the number of people exposed to water scarcity in half uh, up up to 190 million fewer premature deaths over the century. But like I said, that report was from a year ago. Unfortunately, that ship sailed. So I heard the other day that the temperature in the Arctic Circle was the same temperature as Miami at whatever day it was. That's scary. That's scary. That's kind of weird, yeah. That is super weird. And you have seen temperatures. Uh, I think Portland. Did you tell me that Portland the other Portland day was? Portland was 115 degrees. And that's never been, you know, they're breaking records everywhere. So new reports indicate a two degree rise by 2050. So it's speeding up faster than they predicted. And there's reasons for that. The UN says that the trajectory that we're on right now is set to take us to 4.3 degrees Celsius of warming by the end of the century. A 4.3 degree is estimated as $600 trillion global climate damage. That's, That's double all the wealth that exists in the world today. So that's how serious it is. That's how severe this is. Dire, desperate, whatever the hell you you know, want to call it, it's, it's necessary to understand this shit. And it's like, it's like, you know, standing in the middle of a road and you have a fucking truck or a train coming at you, right? Hey, you could say, well, maybe that's not real. You know, maybe this is just my illusion. Maybe I'm just imagining this. Or are you going to get the fuck out of the way and, of that train and try not to get hit by it? Because that's what, that's what's staring us down right now, you know? So there's this thing called feedback loops. Now, this is where it gets really funky. A feedback loop is something that's unexpected and could speed up the process, right? Have you heard of this, Maddie? No, I've never heard of this. Um, the albedo effect is one. It's uh, The sunlight is reflected back by all the ice. Uh, any surface that is white, for instance, like your shirt is white. So, oh, yeah. you, so you get less heat uh, th- than you would if you wear a black shirt. It reflects yeah. the sun, right? Well, they say... Um, it's the same for ice. So, so yeah. the less uh, Arctic ice there is at the top of the planet means the more sunlight gets absorbed, means more warming will take place and yeah. it will speed up the temperature. So once that ice melts, they, can't, they can't even predict what, how fast things are going to speed up and just... And just Dude, not only that, speed, because... It's terrible. Because, like, people think that that's so far away, but, like... They don't even think about the outside factors that affect that. Like NASA just released a report that um, the it, I forgot what it's called, but the, basically the fucking moon uh, by in the mid twenty thirties is gonna have a shift 
And when it does that, it's going to mean the high tides are going to be really, really high. Like, really, like, we're going to experience really fucking high sea levels because the tides all have to just tie in with the moon. That's the moon controls the tides. I heard that and the other day. They were calling it the moon wobble. Yeah, moon like wobble. What the fuck and is a moon so, wobble? So basically, um, there's no way to stop it. But uh, the reason why the high tides are going to be so high is because we have basically fucking no ozone layer left to wow. fucking be able to stop the rising fucking sea level. So the heat is just going to fuck us, and it's just going to make the tides go even fucking higher. For hey, anybody, can I ask you something yeah. real quick? Because yeah. for those stats you were given, you yes. were you were quoting uh, Celsius, right? Yes, yes, yes. So just so you know, then one degree Celsius is thirty three thirty three point eight degrees Fahrenheit, and we go by Fahrenheit in the U.S. So Correct. you were saying four degrees Celsius? Is that what you said? Four point three. Four point three. So that's like a hundred and twenty degrees different. What? No. Right? no, 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 no. That's, that's a that's a global average rise in temperature. Is that that's all that is? Yeah, but you're saying four degrees Celsius because one four degree one degree Celsius is equal to thirty three degrees Fahrenheit. Four degrees right? Celsius is about like forty degrees Fahrenheit. Right. Not even. So, so that's 30, a rise. Thirty three point eight. Right. So that'd be a rise. So in other words, they're saying that the Middle East, right, and like. That by 2050 is going to be like 160 degrees here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying, just to give you the right. Because you say Celsius, I don't know what that even. I, I don't yeah. know the conversion. So well, I had to look the, it the up. thing. I'm glad you asked that. The thing to keep in mind for anybody, it's just a global temperature rise. That's all it is. But the slightest bit can mean so much. It could have so many serious implications because. Like we said, the glaciers are melting. Well, when you think stuff. about it, think about it like this: <clears throat> Your body temperature needs to be at. Um, I think it's like ninety six. If it goes any bl- anywhere below ninety six, like it's fucking crucial for you. And if it goes anywhere over one o three, you need to go to the fucking hospital. There's that ten degrees, ten twelve degrees difference of your body. Sorry, not ten degrees, like fucking eight degrees <laughs> of your body that it needs to stay at, or you're gonna die. It's the same way with the planet. Our temperature of our oceans, they need to stay at a certain temperature or the envi- like all the environments within the ocean and the species and everything will die just like how our body is. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Another related example to uh, feedback loops as the ice melts, uh, it releases carbon and turns to methane and that heats up the atmosphere faster, too. They said that could be an additional two degrees um cloud formation is another if we hit 1200 parts per million of carbon which is much higher than what we're at today we're only at around 400 well not only that's still a lot we're in the 400s conceivably by early next century they said uh, we would completely disrupt the planet system uh for cloud formation and impact alone could be eight degrees celsius of warming all right so we, my po- so we'd likely be or already about four and a half or five degrees by then could immediately be brought to 12 and a half or 13 degrees Celsius. Kay. So my question is, is how okay. does that, sorry, the whole fucking ahead. earth would be on fire. Yeah. I'm just saying that doesn't that, how could that be right? Because wh- what are you saying? How, what did you Wait, say? By you what year did you a say? A warming at, at, by the end of the century. But you said what, how, what was the, how many degrees Celsius? Eight. So that's going to be about eight, eight 50, degrees. 55 it, it can, cloud disrupt. Yeah, Celsius? yeah. Yeah, so that's two hundred and seventy degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that's what would happen if the cloud formation came out and we hit twelve hundred parts per million of carbon rather than the four hundred. So my question. I mean, obviously, everyone knows. Well, it makes know sense. That there was a problem then because we would definitely be dead then. Yeah. 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 My question is though. Literally, everything would be in, in, uh, uninhabitable and. But It'd on be the bright side, you on don't Earth. have to bake cookies anymore. They just bake <laughs> yeah, <you>. by themselves. <laughs> I think that, like, when we say end of the century, people are like, I'm not going to worry about it right now. It's not just the end of the century where we're going to die. Dude, we're going to fucking, our planet's going to be we're done gonna, by 2040. We're going to be no, li- fishless. Listen. Yeah, go ahead. By 2048, we aren't going to have any fish in the sea. If we don't have any fish in the sea, our planet dies. Correct. It literally dies. Because we do not have a planet without that oxygen that's in that ocean and that oxygen that those fish and that algae that in the coral reefs that it creates for us to live. 
don't think of end of the century that the planet's going to be on fire. Yeah, the planet's going to be on fire. California and fucking Oregon are on fire all the fucking time. You on, but only California, Cal, Californians, Californ- Cal, yeah, Cal- Californians, and people in Oregon directly experience that and see it's an issue. People in fucking Kansas and Iowa and fucking all these things, they're going to see it's an issue when their crops dry up. Mm-hmm. And that's when everybody is going to be on board because right now oh, people on the coast already see, uh, see in, uh, the fucking effects of climate change and know that climate change is a fucking issue. It's the people in the middle of America that are like, mm, no, we're fine. Cause they don't experience shit. Right. They don't. And they think that they're not going to experience exactly. it and they are. It's, and they're it's going to hit. There's nothing that it won't hit. Right. And they're waiting for something to like, like an actual cause for them to act. But it's like, and I, and I do believe that there are people on the coast that believe that same way as well. Like, the sea levels aren't high enough, blah, blah, blah. But no, it's like, in the next 20 years, we might not have a planet anymore. And I think that's why, as some, like, as a young person, like, I, I my motivation it's is kind of gone. Extinction. Because it's kind of like, it's not just going to be in our lifetime. It's going to be in those boomers' lifetimes. It's going to be in the fucking people that are in office lifetimes, too. Like, it's going to be in everybody's lifetime, and but like, and we're right now, right now is our time, our literal five year grace period to fucking fix that shit. Well, I'll, yeah, I mean, as depressing as this is, I'll add to what you said, uh, it, it should be empowering too, because we have a, a responsibility or, or an opportunity, you know, it's, it's one or the other. We, we could have a op- massive opportunity right now to really make change and do this. But we could only do it together, and we got to force the powers that be to understand that, hey, we, we're caught up now. We understand that this is not going to get any better. There's no policy that's going to change this. It's not it, – we're done with the zero-carbon mumbo-jumbo bullshit. But I was going to add to what you said by saying, also, the hotter it gets, the more – crazy people behave yeah no people get pissed off when it's angry by they they will fucking once they realize that shit's hitting the fan and they're not there's no going back you're gonna see just brutal crimes uh rape fucking people just behaving like fucking animals well i don't know if you can directly relate that that. to climate though not only that (laughs) well we live in florida we see a lot of crazy shit as it is defense in court i guess it's hot like there's 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 type shit of seasonal depression but listen but listen but listen it gets worse than that let me finish this thought let me finish this thought they said that climate refugees will be coming here because, like I said, by 2050, they say that the Middle East, South Asia, they say upwards of 100 million people could be coming here because it's too hot. It's literally too hot to live over there. Now, I believe there's like 1 billion, no, 1.8 billion people in South Asia, and there's like another 300 million in the Middle East, okay? They say the maximum projection is like 2 billion people or, uh, Fuck that. That's more than North and uh, South America Dude, combined. Dude, look at fucking Asia. Can you imagine? Like, could you could you imagine? Their rising sea well, levels will fuck them. I, not to be dark, but if when we get to that point, they're not going to, no, no one in control is going to allow that to happen. That's when they're going to just start yeah. offing people to, so that doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, that's, that's terrible. And that's it. That's it, terrible, but they're they're not going to let a billion people migrate. They're just not. That's not going to. That's fucking scary. Dude, they right? won't even do that shit now. <laughs> <laughs> they won't even do that shit right. now. We don't Good point. Good point. point. They're we still don't doing that shit. With for fucking, all you people. Yeah. like, yeah. with literal children. Like, no, there's no. If we're not doing that shit now, yeah. they're not going to be doing that shit later. So, to the California wildfires, there was case studies because I want to hit every little part here to let people know what's going on. Uh, there was case studies about the normalization, right? Last year was the worst year in history. The year before that, worst year in history. So they looked into it, right? About 50 years ago, um, they saw that fire burned 60 acres, 60,000 acres in, in California area, right? Fast forward to 2013, 600,000 acres burned down. That's a tenfold increase. Then in 2017, 1.2 million acres burned down. Then in 2018, another 1.9 million acres burned down. 
And and a lot of people that just That affected Bill Gates' pockets. You know he was pissed off. Then Did you know Bill Gates is the number one shareholder of land in America? Yeah, I heard he's buying all the fucking land. A lot of people say that there's always been fires in California though, you know, and shit like that, but I mean, just think about that. Think about how much a fucking acre is and then think about 1.9 million acres and this is just getting yeah, more no, it's, it's normalized yeah like i remember on all over social media there is people uh fucking just posting videos of their houses just burned you know it's insane like it's insane. yeah yeah i watched a documentary on it and it was fucking scary to see what those people were doing it i there was an elementary school and they were they had to evacuate and what they drove through literally looked like hell on earth and that's the thing you know have you ever met a blind person? Uh, y- y- they they seem to be in touch with their senses, like heightened. It's almost like they can see, right? They yeah, they, no, they, it's they, it, they that know. literally scientifically that's how it is. Although it's not like it's They're, heightened, like a superpower. But, but they it's, but they it's because they rely on the other ones so much more that right. And the same thing with deaf people. They they it's like they read lips better. They you don't think that they know what the fuck is going on, but they very much do, right? Right. That's that's. We, we got to take a page out of that fucking book as people because we have these things going on everywhere. And I think Maddie was talking about it earlier, but it's like we have to see to feel things. Yeah. And you shouldn't have to see the sea turtle getting a fucking plastic spoon ripped out of its fucking nose and bleeding. You shouldn't have to see a fucking discarded fishing net wrapping up an innocent dolphin and fucking and dying. Because, because these back. people don't think that they're doing anything wrong until that they see that they're doing something wrong. Right, right. You shouldn't have to see the fucking polar bear that goes out to find food for its youngins, but there's no ice for that motherfucker Because you to don't back. see where your plastic fork ends up. You don't see where yes. your shit, fu- like all the fucking fish where that you consumed where that shit right. was before right you shouldn't have to see the homeless person we're not hungry. until you want to give them fucking five dollars you shouldn't have to you should we got to get back to this you know because we have to start getting in touch with our emotions and understanding the the serious nature of where we're at right and now. and i honestly think billionaires need to be required sorry this is off topic but billionaires need to be required to give a portion away of their money once they hit a billion I used to have a no billionaires thing. We're gonna get yeah, and I, I do well, like your thoughts the, on that. We're the gonna the plastic the companies that are making all these plastic products should be required to Yeah uh, ha- have something to do with the, the with, taxes with on getting every, rid of it too. Yeah, yep. the, yeah, the taxes for all these damages. I agree, Daniel. We need to we need to hit all them too. I mean but my point is, you know, we have to get back to feeling things. We, we just we shouldn't have to see to feel or hear it to feel it. We should just we should just be in touch with this shit and know that, you know, it, it, it affects like like when somebody says, hey, man, you know, that could have been my sister. That could have been my mother. Yeah, well, it was somebody else's sister or somebody else's mother. So that should be good enough, man. You know, and we need to get back to feeling and being in touch with things and just being a community again and really looking out for each other because that's what it's going to take to and get h- up this hill. How yeah. do we do that? Uh, like we're doing. We're starting a movement. Exactly. That's what we do. Public vlogging. Have you, any of you heard of Steven Donzinger, human rights attorney? I s- no. <laughs> Since 1993, he's been investigating reports that Texaco had dumped literally billions of gallons of toxic oil waste into the Amazon rainforest where indigenous groups lived. This man was, uh, he knew he was going out there to, you know, see some stuff, but he was shocked by the massive pools of oil and, and thousands of them all over the rainforest out there. It says uh, the oil was on their clothes. It was in the air they breathed. It was in the food they ate and the water they drank. So a quick rundown. Basically, since the 1960s, Texaco discovered oil in Ecuador. And over the next few decades, started constructing hundreds of drilling sites around. Uh, when you drill an oil well... You go thousands of feet underground and all this rock and heavy metals and man-made chemicals that cause cancer come up out of the ground. So when you do that, you have to put in um, you have to put in li- lines around the place that you, you have to line the pits that you're dumping this material in. Right. Well, they didn't do that shit, dude. Uh, they, they left unlined pits all around the fucking yep. jungle. And when the pipe, th- their pipe overflows, they uh they had pipes running to the rivers and streams that these indigenous people 
drink out of. They they swim, they cl- they bathe, they they drink out of these things, and they didn't tell them at all. It got it killed over two thousand people. Countless are sick and being poisoned. All traditional food and water sources donezo gone. And uh, after all that bullshit, and he, he won a nine billion dollar uh, lawsuit settlement for Ecuador in two thousand eleven, but never got paid. In fact. He is locked up now for that bullshit, char- on a bullshit charge, actually. And uh, he is now serving his 709th day of house arrest on a contempt charge for not handing over his attorney-client privilege documents, his phone and computer, because he had uh, he had his, his future cases and stuff like that I- involved in it. So he didn't want to give and it up. And that's what I mean. We're working, we're trying to fucking fight governments, dude. This is the ultimate like, bully. Fucking right. Fucking governments. Right. But to tie into that shit, we're over by where I live, actually, that exact same shit happened. Almost. Not the oil, but um, we have uh, a power plant right by my house. And there was a class action lawsuit because the emissions not emissions the basically the fucking emissions went into the soil and uh diluted like and fucked up all the water and um it actually gave kids cancer Fuck. it gave like 18 kids cancer wow um and there was a class action lawsuit and it was settled but that shit's still there still operating no shit yep it's the fucking one off, off of 528 the one that you passed right i mean look at flint house. michigan Exactly. They still don't have clean water. Right. They still don't what have that, clean water. Now? Dude, at least a decade. Like, I remember I was eight years old watching fucking Obama talk about Flint. Like, yeah. And now they're talking about with this guy in Ecuador, they're talking about they're going to lock him up officially. No more house arrests. They're actually going to put him in jail. And with little to no coverage taking place, which goes back to what you were saying, why would we show you? Uh, most people that I talk to about this, I mean, that's like two years so far. Mm-hmm. And nobody, uh, hardly anybody, most people don't even know about this guy. So that's why I wanted to say something about him. He's a hero, and he did the right thing. And, uh, yeah, he's a human rights attorney that's being punished for winning a lawsuit against Texaco. You know, if this isn't the ultimate, hey, don't fuck with us, or this is what we can do, then I don't know what is. And that's why there's no real journalism anymore. Right. Because right. <laughs> that's literally why there's no real journalism anymore, because anybody that speaks against the truth it gets silenced, dude. It's, it's <laughs> unbelievable. for the truth. And there was uh, footage on it when he was in Ecuador, and the, the lawyer against him, because they tried, it's, it's a long story, it's actually interesting, look into it, because you need to follow this guy. They were protesting out front of his house just the other day, and uh, there's like a couple hundred people there, but it should have been a couple million people. Um, but anyway, the one lawyer said, he said, you're a corrupt lawyer, uh, Stephen said to this guy. And he said, you're going to pay for that comment. And look at him. He's in jail. And uh, this is what we're up against. So, yeah, if this guy can't do it, then it's going to take a mass of people to push these people in the right direction. Because like I was talking about earlier, we, it's not one person. It's not, it's not a choice. It's a system. It's an economic system that does this. So that's why you got to, you know, and we're going to start a group called One Love, too. One Nation Earth Love Over Violent Encounters. And that's going to be uh, worldwide because we do. Maddie has friends internationally. I have friends internationally. We're going to reach out to them. We already have. And we're going to start this group and start pushing this movement from the bottom up, grassroots. And, um, yeah, we got to do something because, we'll, you know, what, what do we got to lose at this point? Because we, we have to. We, we, don't, we have everything to gain. We, we could practically look at this as, you know, so empowering. You, you have a, a fantastic opportunity to do something incredible and, and literally save the planet. I mean, it doesn't get any crazier than that. So we're going to get on to some like it or not. We're done with being uh, getting through that. And if you're still here, thank you so much for listening. Again, I'm sh- the earth thanks you because it's an incredible, incredible. I mean, you know what I was thinking about the other day? Uh, I watched Joe Rogan, right? And he talks about sometimes how we're living in a simulation. and uh, And I was like, wow. 
You know, I, I always thought that was a crazy thought. I'm like, that's just crazy. I not live in a simulation. But then when you look at the end of the world happening, what's the coincidence or what's the chances that we're living to see the very end of the world and, and civilization? Like you think about that and go, holy shit, we might be living in a simulation. I don't you think know? we're living in a simulation. I think the universe has. A, has a I don't either. I thought it was just a more. No, I used to believe we were living in a simulation. <laughs> yeah, I used to because I don't know. It's just. Shit. I feel like everybody has that moment in life where you're like, mm, this shit's weird. And it's like, there's no way that we just fucking got here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like everybody has that moment when you're like. Oh, yeah, it's called mushrooms. Be- <laughs> Yo, <laughs> to be honest. No, but it was long before that that I had that thought. And I think, no, honestly, the universe has uh, works out the way it does. Like. It has not that it has a plan for everything, but like I think it has a plan for itself. And if we don't go with the plan for itself, we're fucked. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, we, I could go on about that forever, but uh, like it or not, all right. Biden and the Department of Justice will defend excluding Puerto Ricans from receiving disability payments. Like it or not, this was a story about a month ago. Sorry. But this show's been off for a little bit, so we're back now. He refused to give Puerto Rico disability payments? Yeah, they're not going to do it. That Depart- sounds about right, to that's be honest, for Biden to do that. They got to cut back on shit, right? No, yeah, that's so well, fucked you know, up. I that's agree. So I agree. Up. I agree. That's so fucked yeah. up. I honestly don't even know why Puerto Rico is in a fucking state at this point. I think it's honestly just a way for America to save the little fucking pennies that they can. But it's like... It's so fucked up. If their their state of after everything that happened with Maria and how we didn't Hurricane Maria and how we didn't fucking help them through any of that and we're not and we're continuously not helping the people of Puerto Rico, right. it is so fucked. Right, I agree, hundred percent. I need to say anything on that. Do you need to say anything? Uh, no. Yeah, it's, it is fucked up, man. D- disability. Let's just, like, are you let's, fucking? We gotta make me? cutbacks, so let's do it with the uh, the think Puerto of, Ricans. Disability. Think of grandma yeah. not having her fucking disability. Right? Does grandma have a disability? No. Janet does. Yeah. My other, dude, other one she'd might. Be fucked. I don't know if she does or not, but I, I mean, know mine does. I, I'm my mom. I don't know. Maybe my comment is controversial, but I, I mean, they, like you said, they're not a state, so you know. There's certain benefits that the states get that the that the territory the, the territories the, don't the territories don't. So yeah. we need to make them a state in order for them to get those benefits, mm-hmm. or just give them the fucking benefits, and or just give them the fucking benefits. I mean, it's disability, I mean, man. Yeah, but it comes from social. Dude, security. they already don't right. have fucking disability. They still, comes from social security. I agree. They but still just don't them. have Do fucking they, lights. The people that work bail out banks. But the people that work in. In Puerto Rico. So if you work in Puerto Rico, do you pay towards American Social Security or not? I don't think you do, do you? They pay American taxes. Do they pay? They pay towards So which means security? they pay towards Social Security, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Okay. Well, I thought well, last time I checked, well, Puerto Rico was a part true, of America. If that's true, then it shouldn't be Does an issue. Does Puerto Rico... Yeah, I thought I thought last time I checked, they were a part... I mean, I, I have so. no idea. But if, if they do pay towards Social Security, then they obviously yes. should get that benefit. They are required to pay custom taxes, federal commodity taxes, all payroll taxes, um, including Social Security, Medicare, and unemployment taxes. Yeah, so... Then, then so I agree. They should get, get them their fucking money yeah, should, get, get them get their down. fucking money if they pay fucking taxes get them their fucking money I, and i'm I, pretty sure all republicans can agree on that if you pay taxes in america hey, i'll pay extra get them their taxes fucking money. to do that and I would, if my tax dollars up. are going to fucked up places anyway so at least take that's care of them so man. fucked up they pay the, for it i would yeah. think the common person because i didn't know that Right. I would think that most people don't realize. It's okay. That Nobody that. hates you now. You didn't know it. It's all right. I, I, <laughs> we hate hey, you. I, don't think Port, I, I know Puerto Rico is a, 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 a U.S. territory, but I know they pay to, towards our social security all te- system. Almost right. all, all territories pay American taxes. That's why they're a U.S. territory, I thought. Yeah, except for the rich people. Jeff Bezos, and the Catholic Church. <laughs> yeah, Jeff Bezos' ex-wife, Mackenzie Scott, donated $2.7 billion That's to old a, news, BB. It is, it is, but... Again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I just said that. It's a little dated. 
uh, 2.7 billion to 286 nonprofit organizations. She made it clear in her announcement that she is troubled by the increasing concentration of wealth among a small group of individuals, like it or not. Love it. Should have donated more. Bitch got like $55 billion. Did she? No, she didn't. Yes, she did. Uh, she got, she got 50. More than, I thought she had 80. I thought she donated like three times. No, this is her third donation no, since she, her divorce is said. Yeah, she, oh, she's like she's the been highest been donator. Yeah, she's ever. making it rain. Oh, love it. Love yeah, it. Yeah, man. We can't love be, it. Yeah, yeah. She, she, this is her third donation since her divorce. Yeah, but to be honest. She probably donated more since this is so dated. <laughs> she honestly probably did. But if you think about it, dude. Her like, it, her family already has generational wealth with just Jeff Bezos being her husband. She She's doesn't need. So sick of that. She dude. doesn't need that. For, she probably fucking She's hates him. So dude. sick of that dude. Dude, he cheated on her with a fucking Fox News host or whatever. Did fucking, he? Yeah, that's Did why. Did you know that? That's why she got the fucking. I money. thought if you had 180 billion, then you were allowed to do that. But. <laughs> but not when you sign a prenup. Not when you sign a fucking prenup. Yeah. Because when you when you sign a fucking prenup, if you cheat, that she automatically gets half. And not in Saudi Arabia, they will cut your head off. But that's besides Well, point. Jesus Christ, Corey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they do they fucking cut your head off. They do. They behead people to for be adultery. Um, do Derek, it to Jeff Bezos only. I think you, they you only do that to, to the about women, that? though. You got anything to say about that? I say kudos to her. I think Saudi Arabia, you can do her. anything if you're a guy. She doesn't need her fucking money. Yeah. Uh, no, you, you can't. You got anything that's to say facts. about Mackenzie Scott? That's facts. Hmm? Mackenzie Scott? Uh, she's a good one. She's hotter and hotter the more she donates. <laughs> uh, I, seriously, I I've never even seen her, dude, and I'm just like... Uh, she's I actually really pretty. Yeah, is she? She's like a normal person. I, I think that's just super cool, man, that, you know, anybody I like mean, that. I mean, if I was and sitting across the table from think, her and she said, I have $50 billion, I would say, I love you. Do you think... Uh, Dude, there's not... Do you think there's any chance that, like, the fact that she lived with him made her want to donate more? Because it's just like, you're an asshole. Watch what you're supposed to do with Well, I think it's actually really funny to see the difference, because Bill Gates just got divorced, too, to see the difference in how the wives have handled it. Because I think her name's Melinda Gates or something. Um, Bill Gates, accurate. Bill Gates' wife. I don't know. They've been quiet as fuck about their divorce, and I think it it wasn't because it was like no, they she they got divorced because of his dealings with uh, what's his the guy that didn't hang himself, whatever his name. Oh, is. Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein. That's, that's right. That's, that's right. why they got. That's right. Oh that's, yeah, that's, that's right. why they got divorced. Yeah, he's right. Yep. Yeah, that, and, that, that in was fact, his wife's reasoning. Yeah, yeah. In fact, there was something going on that made them delay that because uh, he was involved with something serious, and they were like, "Okay, yeah, well, so we'll she, push up that's after divorce." So, that did, makes so make much public, sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, Derek Chauvin gets sentenced to twenty-two and a half years. Like it or not, love it. I honestly think he should have fucking gotten life. So you don't like it. Like I love that he he got like sentenced. Like it and not. You like it. Like and you don't I'm like just it. happy that justice was actually fucking served for once. But they could have done they 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 could have handed him a life sentence if they wanted to, but they didn't. Yeah, I mean, how old was he? Forty something. So he's gonna be. He's, he's still gonna be alive when he gets out. That's if he serves He'll all get twenty-two back and on, a half. Right? Just, He'll be out fifteen. Good behavior. Exactly, or I'm, better. I'm not sure cop. without looking it up again, but I'm pretty sure that a life sentence, life with parole, is only is twenty is, years. It's twenty years. It's twenty yeah. years. Because yeah. that's when you can apply for parole, and if you get out, you get out. What do you say? Like it or not. 22 and a half for Derek I mean, Chauvin. I, I, I think they, I think he got a, a sentence that. It was that, a that, mediocre I mean, sentence. That, yeah, I mean, it basically. You compare it to all the other. I mean, I don't, I don't know walk. if you could say it fits the crime or whatever, but I mean, 20 years, that's basically his life. That's the rest of his life. You know, he'll probably die before he reaches that point. You think he's going to serve all 22 and a half? Nope. No, I mean, nobody does. So he'll. So that's not but his he'll life. Prob- but unless they have him in isolation forever, then he's going to. And maybe he is since he's an ex cop and and whatever. But they have to have him in some sort of fucking. If, I'll say this: I I like it if he serves all twenty two and. I don't think it's really when when That's you have it. nobody you gotta serve really them all. Be isolated unless you're waiting for something else. I to agree. Happen. Fucking hang them. If, if if they're trying to keep you alive so you can make it to court, okay, isolate you. But once you're sentenced, then you just go in with everybody else. Because right? if he's forty something and he gets out and he's sixty something, if he serves all twenty two and a half, then I, I I would approve of that. I would like it to be more, whatever, to make an example out of him. But 
you know, I, I have a feeling he's going to be walk in 10 or less. I think the court was like, oh, we actually sentenced him. That's enough. That's, well, that'll be enough. Right. It's that's all, what it's, the court it's was all, thinking. Uh, he's going to be yeah. a millionaire in the next couple of years because he's going to put out a book and stuff like that. Yeah. Dude, just that's like him. that, just what the, f- whoever shot Trayvon Martin, what's his name? George Zimmer- Zimmerman. Zimmerman. He fucking sold the gun he shot him with. He signed Skittle bags. Like, that... <sighs> and, and charged for it, dude. He really did, man. It's fucking gross. It's fucking that, that was sick. a surprising one. That, yeah. That guy. Yeah. I'm Especially so, after hearing he the literally recording what's, and everything. Deserve, what's more of a, it's like Casey Anthony. They both deserve to fucking rot in hell for the rest of eternity. And I don't even... I believe, believe people always shit. get what's coming to them, though. I do believe that because I spent first half of my life having the worst karma look at conor mcgregor man's fucking snapped his ankle after talking all that shit that was i can't wait to the uh, (laughs) rematch bill cosby freed from prison after court overturns conviction like it or not uh fucker needs to be in jail for the rest of his life but i actually read the article and oh you're with me and like there's a lot of people that don't feel that way. They were like, I heard listen, like all this listen. celebration and stuff, and no, I'm like, yo, wasn't no, there like 60 girls? There's no need to celebrate so, anything. 60 women, I should say women. I think he needs to be in jail for the rest of his fucking life, but his lawyer fucked up, or the district attorney fucked up. The, that, That's right. the only fucking reason that man is out, because the evidence was there. Everything was fine. Like, he still would be in jail if the district attorney just didn't say, you won't be in prison if you, uh, like, tell take the, the plea and t- tell the truth or whatever. Right, right. That The only reason, that's the only reason, because he said those words is the You're reason right. why yeah, but, he's out. But in, in, a, in a normal situation, it doesn't matter what you say. You could, I mean, it has to be on paper. It has to be signed and stuff, right? No, I mean, so... Can you just dist- explain? So a district attorney has to, if they just say it, like it's that the it doesn't need to be on paper or anything. And I actually, I think it was on paper. They actually did sign. It was like his testimony or whatever from previously that they then used in court. So like he got him to talk and was like, yeah, like all this shit. But the only problem was that they then used it in court. If they if they didn't use that testimony at, at all, they you. would it, he wouldn't he would still be in jail. But the reason that he's not is because they then decided to use that testimony. So like, right? right. Yeah, no, I, I hate I, it. I, he I hate, deserves to be yeah, locked I away. I don't like it either. That attorney fucked up. I think that yeah, but she's right. The attorney fucked up, the and this is all about loopholes. I think you should put out a book just like OJ did, like. If I did it, I would have done it. Like and it's this. so sickening because they got so many fucking of his victims to speak to, to come out. Yeah, if there's and it's 60 like, people saying something and they all came out, that is, they all spoke up, which is which is awesome. But you know, if there's 60, then, then somebody's telling the truth. I think you should have fucking ignored. They honestly just should have fucking ignored and it. You ignore so Gateway. much. You right, ignore right. so much. Right. And you put innocent people away for no fucking reason. So true. Preach. But then you're gonna s- just say, no, we cannot ignore this one. What the fuck? Right. What the fuck? Right. Like, I just, I, I like, I, I don't understand it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's fucked. It's about the pudding pops. <laughs> No, it's the fact that B- Bill Cosby, because he's a little fucking... What do you think? Oh. What's your call on it? I mean, it's obviously because he's a celebrity. That's why. Right, right. Well, no, I think it's because he has ties. Like, well, Jeffrey Epstein what? ties. What? Yeah, no. I think it's well, because he, of that shit. You think I Cosby think, and Epstein was I think he has together? Trumpy ties. Well, Cosby is... Is like that's as, all as one tie. He exactly. Was high, he's as high as you go. So if there's anybody good, he was tied to them. If there's anybody bad, he was tied to I them. I didn't he was think tied about that. I think he had ties that were able to like. You to got the kids. Push, I push got it. the drugs. <laughs> he was getting his roofies from somewhere. Yo, that's fucking crazy, man. I didn't think about that, but I don't know. It's kind of two different things, though. That's a, that's a that's a stretch because one side. Or he also just would have had, had great, like, lawyers that were like, hey, you can't do this is. shit. This is, this is an O.J. Simpson thing, but rape. That, that's what this is. That's a little different than No, OJ. it's completely different, I no, think. No, I'm saying he got off because he was a celebrity, like you said. Right, it's it's because he's a celebrity. That's if all he, I'm if saying. If he did the same thing and he was not at the status that he is, then it would have been a different result. Right. He's one of the 
people get locked up by a majority. Biden to monitor text messages for vaccine misinformation. Like it or not. You saw they this in Politico? They already do that shit. I don't really care. They do, but it was in Politico, and it's just like, uh, what? Yeah, they're, 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 but that's, you don't care? Well, so they that, could go in there and correct? To, add, Dude, a, to l- add a like it or not, the Johnson, Johnson & Johnson is modifying their vaccine to account for the uh, Delta blood Delta. clots that oh. it's giving some people. No, what? No, I heard that they weren't. I heard that I read it a couple days ago. Because they, they were, also they, they, found they, a neurological disorder in the vaccine as well that ca- that in a very few amount of patients, and they were like, "No, but it, it's still good. Like you're like you're fine." Yeah, they're getting like ninety something percent. Or no, uh, Johnson Johnson's like 88, 86. Even with the old vaccine stuff that's well, been how around many people, for years, it's like one in every one. Well, how many people are they vaccinating for eighty eight point six or whatever? I think like. Uh, America right now enough has to make like, it a good percentage. America right now has three hundred and something million people, uh, like with at least one shot. Okay, three hundred um, million? Three, really? Yeah. No, it's not. That we only much. have three hundred thirty million. Three hundred. Million. How many people have been? And why are they freaking out? I don't think it's that much. Um, like, three hundred and thirty-four million doses have been given. One hundred and fifty-nine million are fully vaccinated. Forty-eight. Right. That's what I mean. At least one dose was one. At least one shot was given. Uh, one shot was given to 300 million, but it's only 150 something million people. So half. So 48.5 percent of America is fully vaccinated. Right. Um, Wait, something funky about that number. It's though. Approximately half. So close you're to half. telling me that 150 million got one shot, and then 300 got. Because you have them? to think that. So no, Pfizer. Every, so Pfizer. Two so shots. Pfizer has two shots. Right. Johnson and Johnson has one. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. And they Moderna went. has. But that one. still seems but high for increase, as much as they they're panicking. No, Moderna has two. Moderna has two. That's but what they want to increase it to three because of the Delta variant. They said, that. but no, they want to make the, the third one a booster, but they said that they're not even in the process of making a booster. They're not worried about well, it Back right to now. this, back to this, though, because this is fucking important right now. This is some authoritarian shit. Monitor text messages for vaccine misinformation. What's next? Once you let that door open and they come in there, what the fuck is next? Dude, they well, already monitor all our social... We already do allow that Yeah, shit. the Patriot Act. They've been, if you that's have, my point. If you have an iPhone and you have iMessages, yeah. that is signing... That's yep. your terms and conditions. They yeah. read all your messages already. Yeah. And that's my point. Since the fucking 9-11, they've done the Patriot Act and they never did that. In fact, there's been FBI... Uh, or not FBI, NSA... Uh, what the fuck is his name? There's been whistleblowers that have come forward and talked about parallel construction Snowden. and shit like that. Well, Snowden was one of them, but this guy is uh, William Benny, I think his name was, or Bill Benny or something like that. Anyway, he's a whistleblower, he used to work at the NSA, and he was talking about parallel construction and how, you know, they'll they'll just give, the FBI will just give the cops or whoever, the, or the NSA will give the FBI the information on a drug dealer or whatever, a random drug dealer, and they can't use the direct information, but they'll go arrest this guy and do parallel construction with the information. I mean, they, they of course, they're spying on us. But my point is, this is the next step. It's like, at what point do we put our foot down and say, hey, we can't allow this anymore? Like, we've always had this feeling. Snowden told us that they're spying on you and doing all this shit. But literally going in there and saying, oh, I mean, how does that even work? You see a text message that you don't like and said, because somebody was saying, and, and how do you... How do you have discourse when somebody? Is Cor, it's, it's probably going to be like, like Luke, YouTube. It's an algorithm. It's so. probably going to be like what Twitter did when they started um, flagging misinformation shit. They'll just put a notice or they'll send you a text message that says that this is false. This is this is from the government. This is this is a reportedly false like advertisement or reportedly false thing. Yeah, I that's don't like probably it. what they're going to do. I don't like it. I honestly fuck that. With how much because freedom of the press, right? That is our constitutional right. Freedom of the press. With how much misinformation is going on in America, like, when, when you're just trying to have a fucking discussion, you you two are saying completely different fucking facts. I agree. You know what I mean? So, yeah, fucking regulate it. I don't give a fuck, to be honest. You're already... What? Dude, I, let me this let me clarify. This is the craziest let me, thing. Let me clarify. For the person that says she don't want billionaires. Let me clarify. Because in my Snapchat, I, there's a new, new fucking thing or whatever... That um, cops are actually going into the Snapchats and deleting um, 
and flagging profiles that are known drug dealers because I don't know if you guys in this day and age fucking drug dealers are all over Snapchat. They'll post what their menu is on their story or whatever and cops have the right to go in to your Snapchat. But that's see different. It. No, because dude, I don't that's fucking no listen, because I don't even fucking use text messaging. I have 700 unread messages right now on my phone. I could tell. I only yeah, I know I never <laughs> respond. But I only use Snapchat to communicate, and I that's it. I use Snapchat to communicate, and they already have that right. That's why I don't give a fuck. They've seen all my nudes. They've seen all my fucking messages with all my friends because my phone is my lifeline. That is because all my friends are international, so all of my fucking friends, I communicate but through listen, my phone. They know everything about listen, me. I don't give a fuck. But listen, miss, m- this is just another authoritarian shit because Dr. Fauci comes out and says, oh, you don't use masks, and then he says, Use masks. I was just telling you that so we had uh, PPE. It's like there's misinformation anyway. Okay, It's the, all about the putting Iraq the right war. people in charge of it, Corey. Right. Who are those people? Who are the fact? That's a great point. So who are the fact checkers to fact check the fact checkers and then fact check the fact checkers that fact check the fact checkers? Who, uh, where does be, that end? It needs to and be, who is it the needs final to fact be checker? the same process that mm-hmm. like the I'm Supreme not even Court. trying to be funny, dude. I, I know, like, and I'm trying to give you an answer. Which Checks is, and balances. Which is, <laughs> literally, no, which is this, like the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, their job is to be unbiased. That is their job, is to be unbiased. And it needs to be ho- held at that same level as the Supreme Court. This is a very high duty. You are conserving the truth of our nation right now, right? And you need Supposed to be. Supposed to be. Yes. And I think that's what it needs to come down to, which is you need to get the right fucking people and I think you can tell who the right fucking people are if we can all. But the thing is, is we all needed to unite. Like we have 70 million people that think a completely different way that we they do. have the right people. That's why they're about they to start think checking that they our already checks, have the messages. right people. They think that they already have the right people. I think and that's they're not just, true. I think they're just gradually just taking more and more, more, more and making us more uh, desensitized to, to the more that they're taking, man. And at some point I mean, it, when we're together, when we get all these people together, it's just another thing we're saying, fuck you too. And I'm sorry, but I'm not. I'm not cool with I, that I've shit. A, I've assumed since I ever had a, uh, especially a, a smartphone, that I was being that everything that I would do on there was being seen or recorded or or documented. Maybe maybe no one's seeing it, but it's being housed in a system somewhere or whatever. I mean, and it's ever since it is. It is. It's ever since computer uh, computer uh, computers got uh, cameras in them. Right. I, I think that's where it really started because the CIA and right. the FBI released reports that I mean, was like, yeah, we're spying on you. We I are. Know, we yeah. can get I into that I know a shit. dude that told me they, that he, they could, keep he, it could, endless he could hack too. into any, he could look through anybody's camera. I mean, he's not In involved. high school, I He's not involved people. with the CIA or whatever, but if he, but he knows how to do the systems where he can look on your phone and look on your, he can mm-hmm. do that. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody that knows how can, can do it. Right, but my point is they're they're telling us now that they're gonna do it and they're gonna f- start flagging you or whatever it is. But they're just but my it. point, they've already been yeah, doing my so point is is, is no. they've also been letting us know that we do that. Like the CIA and FBI release reports that they do do that. They have let but, us but know. But what, what's next? Okay, so so if you keep doing that and be like, oh, we're gonna give you a warning now, or what's the next? You see what I'm saying? It's gonna be like an every Amber road. alert to everybody. Corey just did this, and then they're gonna send it send it to everybody, so we all. Corey know. did this again. Corey did this again. Corey keeps doing this. What's the next consequence? You know, what, what, I think what, it's really only going to like become an issue if they try to like get us criminally for it. Like that's the oh, only issue. But that's the same thing about environmental change. You're gonna wait till it gets too late to to stand up and do something about it. They, 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 we're past that. The Patriot Act, what Snowden fucking put out there, Julian well, Assange, all these journalists that are getting fucking prosecuted for shit. I mean, we have to stand up for these people. It is a. It's not just one single thing. It's all these things, and we have to stand up against this shit. It's authoritarian measures that are being taken and. Honestly, we, we they're Honestly, locking down because we're so popular. Or look at Cuba right now because I saw a TikTok the other day that like really honestly was like, "Oh shit." And this girl was saying Cubans do like do not complain about anything. She was saying that they do not complain about fucking anything. And we're it isn't into that until next, next one. It it isn't until where you start to take away the basic necessities to live 
where they start to lose shit. Well, then let's and, just go right and, into the next one. And then. Cuba, fucking, what's your next one? It's Cuba. America is endorsing regime change in Cuba, like it or not. Um, it's kind of hard because, like, I don't know what America's purpose for it is. Is it to help out the crisis right now going on in Cuba, or is it to, like... That's what they're to, saying. They, to they help said, out the president that's currently destroying. They the said country. the protests are calling for food, more food, and more medical supplies. That's literally that because that's the thing is that's what it, the TikTok was saying was, dude, we just want fucking their electricity gets shut off and their like everything, their power gets shut off at seven o'clock every night, every night. Their that's their internet. They are closed off from the world after seven o'clock at night. They don't have any fucking water. They don't have any food. They don't have any medical supplies. They don't have shit. And because the pandemic screwed them, fucking screwed them. I'll and tell you like, what else screwed them. Our fucking sanctions. In America. Our sanctions. America fucked our, them. That's, that's just like every single fucking country. America fucks every single country. Oh, uh, yes. And that's the problem. There's only 12 million people there. And we've done this embargo for 60 years now, six decades. And nobody's talking about that. Nobody's talking about, you but, know the trillions of dollars of fucking, you know, uh, sanctions that we've slapped on them. And there's like over 200 of them. It's it's incredible. Yeah. And this is something that's not being talked about anyway. And this directly affects them. And if they need food, if they need uh, Every week medical they supplies, how about this too? How about uh, lifting the vaccine patent protection off of them and helping them there? How about doing that? You don't have to go invade their fucking country to help them. How about you just quit sh- the stranglehold that you have on this fucking place and th- that's all you have to do and then you move back but that's not what we want we're not trying to bring freedom and democracy to anybody we're not doing that we could have been and you know how you know because colombia has been protesting for fucking months now but we don't do nothing because our right-wing government is fucking allies with them so we don't do shit. And then Ethiopia. Ethiopia is doing a fucking civil war right now. Their government is trying to fucking uh, massacre like fucking a whole ethnic group. Because every There's, single form of government you know, right now is fucking corrupt. Like, it's just corrupt. It's overrun. And it, all they think about is money. And right, they don't have the right, right people in power. And is there communism there? Yes. Is it a dictatorship? Of course. But it doesn't give us the right to invade them and overthrow their fucking government and do that but we're gonna do it because it's all about corporation profits it's all about resources we are fucking imperialist that's what we are we go in and we'll fucking do things if it benefits the the profit and that's that's how no we cap. are and it's fucking sad uh, and, and you know how else you know sorry i don't mean to you're interrupt okay. you I was gonna say is, thing anyway. is is fucking saudi arabia is our fucking ally the people that behead people if you commit adultery or do some it, this is this is how you know. It's like, it, it's it's so fucking disgusting. And uh, yeah, it's not about freedom and civil liberties and democracy and all this shit. We do this shit on the regular, and that's what the people don't know. And that's America for you. So, you know, if you, if you don't believe it, look it up. That's what we fucking do. So, and you're not going to find it easily because so they don't talk about that shit. So you're saying we don't cut people's heads off. So that's good. <laughs> right. No, we run torture programs and shit. And don't tell nobody. But yep. But that's our show. You guys got anything else to say? Fuck capitalism. <laughs> don't you say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it, it is. Uh, it's a sad situation, though. Those people are being starved over there. No, and 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 it's it's fucked up, man. And just know that I do support them. I I just think that we can support them without invading their fucking territory. We all you gotta do is lift the sanctions. I don't understand why we're invading anyway. Like, why the fuck are we even invading? They're talking about doing airstrikes and shit. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> it's unbelievable. What the fuck? I shouldn't even have said that. I I, I shouldn't even have said that. But uh, that yeah, that's what they're fucking talking about. It's fucking unbelievable. You got anything to say, Big Stat, before we get out of here? Uh, no, I'm, I, th- I think I said all that I have to say. You got, hey, it was a good first show, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think we got, uh, hopefully we got their attention with the uh, climate change and all that and how capitalism affects it. And um, Yeah, we, have, we got a mission to do. So don't forget, like and subscribe the show because the more people that like it, the more people that see it. And thanks. 
a lot for doing that. Everybody good? Yep. Thank y'all for tuning in. If you can't be peaceful, keep it moving then. See you in the comments. Thank <laughs> you.